it's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. Even we're live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatrick. That n never, ever, ever gets old. It is Peter Tusick, uh, Brand Ambassador of Blindness Products, and welcome back to Human Wear Alive. Uh, we are here for, I think, the fifth time, right, Andrew? Correct, yes. I think so. And my internet is, uh, seems to be a little flaky at the exact moment, so hopefully I don't sound like too much of an underwater robot to everybody out there. But we are glad to be back. We're going to be looking at... Um, some Victor sort of esque book experiences, right? So we're looking at Easy Reader Plus. Uh, we're also going to be looking at file and folder management. Um, remember, if you have questions, we will take those questions. So you can always raise your hand by pressing Alt Y on your Windows computer. You can use Command Y on your Mac. And if you are on the phone, you can always use star nine. So without any further ado, I'm going to jump right in uh, and start sharing my screen. Remember, if you have feedback or you have any questions, please send those to humanware live at humanware.com. Um, and again, we'd love to take your feedback. We will have another poll today as well. So at the end of this, um, another sort of poll to let everyone vote on things they want to see um, in our upcoming webinars that we're going to be hosting every Tuesday and Thursday at noon Eastern. The other thing is we are finally live on Facebook. It finally worked. So uh, Andrew, major congratulations on getting us live on Facebook. At last. <laughs> <laughs> at last. So I am going to share my screen and I'm going to share my computer sound. We're going to share this Peter, Zoom. Today. and I'm going to mute my speech. Space. All right. So what we're going to do, I am going to talk about utilizing the Easy Reader Plus application, and I'm going to show you two different ways of bringing content into the app. Easy Reader Plus is fantastic because it lets you not only read your EPUB or your DAISY books in Braille or using speech, but it also lets you bring books in directly through the application. So if you're using NFB Newsline, um, if you're using RNIB, if you're using Bookshare, there are various services that will, you can download directly from. And what I'm going to show you is how you can bring in a DAISY book, just a, a DAISY textbook directly from Bookshare, actually we'll do EPUB. And then also going to show how you're able to import a file, a DAISY audio file. So I'll show you how to take the BrailleNote Touch Plus audio tutorial and import it into Easy Reader Plus so that you can then have DAISY audio. So two different ways that we'll do this and I'll touch on um, how we're going to walk through these different steps. And there are how-to videos, right? You, you did some snapshot tutorials on this as well, Andrew, right? Yes, that's great, uh, Peter. And they, they should all be in the, uh, the new KHW Buddy application as well. That's right. Awesome. All right. So let's do this. So I am going to press the letter E. So I'm on the main menu. I'm going to press the letter E to come into Easy Reader Plus. Remember, this is specific to the BrailleNote Touch Plus. If you have an original BrailleNote Touch, there is no Easy Reader Plus application. So I'm going to press E. And we find Easy Reader, Easy Reader Plus. Plus. And I'm going to press Enter or a cursor router key to open Easy Reader Plus. Easy Reader Plus, L Pro Progress Bar, Florida, right. Lauren now, Groff. For anyone who has ever been in anything I do, you know that I love randomly searching for books. The, when you first open this, it will put you in your My Books list, or at least it should. And if it doesn't, we're going to talk about how to access your various bookshelves or services. But I landed on a book called Florida. Um, and actually, when I downloaded this, we were in front of quite a few people, and I, we realized very quickly that the book was in Spanish, which was great because I don't speak Spanish, but I was able to get the, uh, the point across of what I was trying to show. So it was a, it was a good one, and you, you, uh, if you missed it, 
hopefully it never happens again, so you might never see that. But um, what I'm going to do is talk about how, how do we work with this. Now, the first time you launch Easy Reader, you will have to log in or create a Dolphin account. You can either create a Dolphin account or you can log in with your Gmail account. If you're under 16, you're going to have to have parental approval. So again, you'll have to follow those steps. So the first time you go in, you're going to want to do that. And that is just so that you're able to access this portal and, and then we'll show you how to get into your various books and places. When you are in Easy Reader Plus, if you press space with the letter B, you will open the side menu or the bookshelf sort of menu, if you will. So if I press space with B, I come into button. what is what is known as the, the side menu, and this has various options. So the first thing we see here is my books, and that is where all of the books or all the content that I have um, in terms of EPUB and DAISY sort of books will go. If I press my next thumb key, I will see the different services that I have here. So I'll press space or my next thumb key. We can manage, manage the libraries, libraries. Let's button. come down again. Here's Bookshare, Bookshare so again, button. If you need to log into your Bookshare account. We're gonna go here to search for a book, but this is where you would log into your Bookshare account. You would press enter here, and put in your necessary information. This Sela is the library SELA library button. for our friends who are in Canada. Um, you can access SELA here. And then we have EPUB, button. EPUB uh, Project Gutenberg and so on. There are just many other choices here. One thing to keep Project Google Bookshare button Vision Australia Bernib Overdrive B Overdrive Bernib Reading Serve Dolphin Easier My Books button Manage Libraries so Bookshare button quickly. If we needed to look for libraries, so if you didn't see your library listed, that is where we would come in and actually look for something like NFB Newsline under newspapers, or maybe um, you're in Sweden or you're somewhere else where you have a different library. If it's not here, if you don't see it, come into Manage Libraries. Manage Bookshare button. Manage if you Libraries were to press enter, button. You would be able to come down and see the various libraries. So again, you can get into NFB Newsline and some other spots. We are going to download a Bookshare book. So I am going to press Enter on my Bookshare button here. It's going to say Waiting button. For, and that means waiting that for. It's connecting. Waiting for. All right. Search and it comes the menu. up and it brings button. you to the side menu. So it loaded. It loaded the page, and now I'm able to search the collection. Remember, the first time you do this, you're going to have to log in with your Bookshare credentials. I am using an individual account. If you have an institutional account, so for those of you uh, who are in school and you you have an institutional account, you're, you will not be able to search for books. Your teacher, your, your TVI, or your whomever manages your account is going to have to put books in your reading list for you to download. Your reading list can be accessed on this page as well. So if I press the letter S, I'll come to Side menu, search in button, all. Search in all. Here it says edit search box. in all and it's an edit box, which is where I'll go to search for content. But again, if I have an individual account, I can do that. If I don't, I cannot. So if I press my next thumb key, uh, my, my reading, reading list. list or what would be known as reading list. Uh, this would be where you would find your reading list if your teacher has assigned books to you or, or sent them to you using the institutional account. And that's very important because you won't be able to download them unless they are granted or given to you by your teacher. But I'm showing this on an uh, on a individual account. So I'm going to come up to my search, search in all, all edit, edit box, box. press enter. And now Search I'm editing, and I know I'm editing because I have a two dot braille cursor, meaning I can use literary braille inside my edit box. Visually, there is the letter E at the bottom left corner of the screen. We are going to download Little Women today. So I'm going to type in Little Women. And remember, literary braille, so I can just hit That's L. Six. Women. L. L. Little. Double right, M. So dots. Women, two. Six. And it's going to search. Now at this menu, point, it searches button. for all of the hits. And you know that sometimes on Bookshare, you get multiple results. Um, they've, they've been working on cleaning this up and they've done a very good job, but sometimes you'll see multiple occurrences of the same book. So keep that in mind. If I press my next thumb key, I'll come into my search results. Search and all. Edit by Little Women. So little this is something women. in the Little Women good collection. Wives. That's not what we want. I'm going to press my next thumb key. We'll see book information. And again, I'll book come down information. the list one more time. 
Little Women, Louisa May Alcott, so, FQ 1.5. I want Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. What's nice here is I can read how her last name is spelled, A-L-C-O-T-T, -T, right? That's really important. I talk about the importance of reading Braille, and this drives that point home. So when I'm citing this, I'm actually spelling that name properly instead of just guessing it using TTS. So I'm going to press Enter. It's going to load the book. Loading. And now at this point, book information. I can press the letter D to come to the download button. Download if button. you were in your reading list and you found your book that your teacher had assigned to you and you press enter on it, now you'll be in the same spot I am. You can press the letter D, find the download button, and press enter. All right. Download in progress. Now, while that's in Little progress, women. it should download pretty quickly. They're, they're, very, they're not very large books. But once it downloads, now it will go into... Loading. No. Loading. Now book we'll information. My, it, it's going to be placed in my, uh, the my books area. So any books you download will go into my books. And remember, you need to get there through the side menu. Okay. So we're going to press the letter O because, again, we can just open it right from here. Open Otherwise, button. I could open the side menu and go find the book and then press enter on it. And it will open it up. So let's open it and talk about book navigation. Loading. Loading. Side right. Little Women. Now, when you press enter on it, you will be placed at the top of the book. So we're in the book, and there are quite a few ways to navigate through this book. The easiest way is going to be to look at kind of the divisions, right? What if I want to move to chapter one or page 14 or and so on. I, I can do that. Remember the, the slippery slope here at times is not all Bookshare books are created equal, right? Not all Daisy books are created equal. We don't know what the markup will be until we open a book up. Sometimes you will have a book that has two levels and is very poorly marked up maybe. It doesn't even have page markup. And sometimes you have a book that's flawless, like a textbook, where not only does it have multiple levels, but you can get to section 1.2, 1.3, and even subsections, 1.2.1 or 1.2.2. So we, again, it, we're kind of relying on whomever uploaded this book and created the divisions to, to make this very usable. But if I want to quickly look at the navigable or the navigation, the navigable elements of this book, I can press backspace with the letter B. Backspace with B brings me into book navigation. So I'm going to do that. Book navigation. Navigate right, up. So we're in book Button. navigation. And if I press my next thumb key, I will see the different levels or types of navigation elements that this book might have. Book navigation, headings, so right now I have selected. headings selected. And what headings would be would be any of your major headings, right? This could be your chapters, and we'll go look at that. We also have pages. Pages. Right? And bookmarks. Bookmarks. We'll talk about how we set those and navigate those. But if I press my next thumb key, I'll be into my headings list. Little women zero percent. Little women zero percent. Louisa May Alcott zero percent. Where this is in the book, but if I come down, contents part one, Z chapter one, Pla chapter two, a Mary, chapter three, the Lawrence boy right, five so percent. Three, the Lawrence boy is at five percent of the book. Now, if I press enter here, I will be taken to the beginning of chapter three. Little women. Chapter three, right. the Lawrence and now boy. I can use my inner right thumb key and start reading this in Braille, or I can press the action button on the right side of my Braille note touch to start reading this using my synthetic speech voice. Alternatively, if I want to know, so, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm on chapter three, but where exactly are we? What page are we on? Or, or maybe I'm reading and I don't know where I am. Remember when we're in a book, we can press space with dots one, five, six to get the, where am I? Um, option here. And where am I? Tell me where am I? List where I am exactly in the book. Little women. Oops. Heading. Okay. Little women. Heading. Chapter three. The Lawrence boy. Level one. Position. Five point three percent. Right. And we get that sort of. We get that given to us. Now this particular book appears to not have page markup, or it would have told me page. 27. So I might go back and look for a different version of the book if I'm really concerned with finding that page markup. I'm going to say okay and come back into the book. Okay. 
Chapter three, the All Lawrence right, boy. Chapter three, the Lawrence boy. So, I'm on the book, and we saw. Remember, backspace with B would bring me back into book navigation, where I could select my level, or you know, or or how I want to move through the book, or my bookmarks. And let's just say that I want to bookmark where my current position is in the book, and then I want to navigate to it later. So when I want to drop a bookmark in. I can press the Braille shortcut Enter with M, the same way we bookmarked a web page in Chrome last Thursday, which would have been two episodes ago on the fine Humanware Live webinar series. If I press Enter with M, it will bookmark throw in the added. Bookmark. So I've just bookmarked myself at my current position, which is Chapter Three, The Lawrence Boy. And if I press Enter with M a second time, what it will do? is I can name, edit box. I can name bookmark. this bookmark. So I'm in an edit box where I can actually type in the name of what I want this bookmark to be. Or maybe why am I bookmarking this, right? For future reference. Maybe I want to um, tell myself why I'm annotating this or something. I might say, this is neat. Dots y -S -N -T. Again, not very relevant to the Lawrence boy, but I can write, this is neat. I can press neat. my enter Dot key. Six. This and I can new line. multiple lines here so you can truly annotate. So keep that in mind. I'm going to get rid of that new line. But I'll press my new next line button deleted. in this edit field. And we're going to press audio S. Note. could record an audio note. But I'm going to press S. And we're going to save this. Save. So I pressed S to move to the save button. And I'm pressing enter. Little Women, All right. Chapter 3, now, The Lawrence Boy. That was added. We'll come back to that later. Let's say, so I'm on chapter three and we'll figure out how to get to my bookmarks in a moment, but I'm gonna come back to the beginning of the book. So one, two, three with space. And what I will now do is I'm gonna show you. Top, without any presence. How to actually search for text in a book. Top, Louisa right. May Alcott. Now, if you want to search for, so if your class or if your friends or if you just remember you fell asleep and the last thing you heard was, something about a piano, for instance. You can say, okay, I don't know exactly where we were. I don't know how to get there, but I wanna find the piano, right? Or a certain set of words. Just like in Chrome, we can press space with the letter F as in find. So space with one, two, four, and that will bring me into. Search. A search at a edit box. box. I can, I can type in plus. a search phrase. So I'm gonna type in piano. And I'm going to press Piano. And what it will piano. do is it will search for the whole book and pull up any occurrences of the word piano. So if I press my next thumb key, clear query. I'll hear this. And envying girls with nice pianos. All right, so and, and being envying girls with nice pianos. If I press it again, as much music out of the old piano. So but again, she had a way of every soft. occurrence in the book where the word piano might have occurred. So obviously, if you're searching for a very common word, you might have lots and lots and lots of occurrences. But if you search for a two or three word text string, for instance, if I had searched for much music out of or something, I would have been brought right to this result. And if I press enter on a search result, little at nine, they stopped right work and sang as usual before they went to bed. No one but Beth could get much music out of the old right, piano. So the very but beginning of that paragraph. And so at this point, I can then say, well, where am I? I have no idea where I am even in the book, right? And that brings back our space with WH. Where am I? Where am I? Little women. Heading. Chapter 1. Playing Pilgrims. Right. Level 1. Position. 2.9%. Bottom. So okay, again, at I can nine find days out, stop. Okay, that was in chapter one. So again, tying these commands together, but you can search for a string of text. All right, the last piece of this, before I show you how to import a book, is how would I find that bookmark? I've clearly, I, I don't remember where it was. It, it was something about the boy, the Lawrence, our, our friend Larry, although it's not L-A-W. But a boy about Lawrence, I want to find it. I need to get to that bookmark. So backspace with B brings me into book navigation. Book navigation. And now Navigate what I need to do is button. if you're somewhere buried down in your list, come all the way to the top of your screen. So L with space. And let's use our, our previous thumb key or our next thumb key and find bookmarks. Book navigation. Headings. Pages. Bookmarks. Bookmarks. So bookmarks. And then I will this see my first neat. bookmark here. This is neat. I would see as many bookmarks as there are. 
right, in this list. So I can pull this up, or if I press edit my bookmark. next home key, I Button. can edit this bookmark. Maybe I want to rename it, or maybe I want to get rid of it, right, and then I have bottom. bottom. So you will be brought into this is neat. your uh, bookmarks, bookmarks, your bookmark list, and you can press enter, and we would go right to this is neat. Little women, Brings little women. Right to that bookmark in the book. So again, Side menu. what I can Search. do when I want bookmark. to is jump right into that, into that content. What I'm going to do, I'm going to back out of here and I'm going to show you how to import a book from uh, a Daisy sort of audio book, which is actually going to be an audio tutorial by our friends at Mystic Access who make all kinds of wonderful tutorials. And we'll sh I'll show you how to bring that into the Easy Reader Plus application. So I'm going to come back to the main menu and I've downloaded this from uh, actually, I'm going to close this app just because I want it to work right. Recent so apps I overview. Press my square button Clear all. space with two, three, five to bring up my recent apps list. I'm going to find Easy Reader, and I'm going to press my next Easy Reader Plus this button here. Open Easy Reader. Dismiss Easy Reader Plus. All right. Button. So we dismissed it. Easy main I menu. To, to start from square one. So I have downloaded the Braille Note Touch Plus audio tutorial. There is one for the original Braille Note Touch as well. Uh, but I've downloaded it to my Braille Note Touch Plus. It's in the downloads folder and I want to, it's a daisy. I, ch I chose daisy and I want to read it in Easy Reader Plus. So when I find the file, I'm going to press space and come in, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to press F and come into my file manager. This will directly tie into what Mr. Andrew Flatris is going to talk about uh, in a moment when it comes to file and folder management. But I'm going to press F we come file into the file manager, manager. I'm key press files. Enter, and I want to come into my downloads folder, which I will be in. Key files. And key soft underscore apps do, folder. Bear dot z for bn touch brill and note touch plus the zelody tutorial so dot zip. Brill note touch daisy audio tutorial dot zip here. If I press enter on it, it's going to ask what I want to use to open it with. Open with easy reader plus. Choose easy reader plus. Now, they can stay zipped. You do not have to unzip them. That's for a whole nother time when you talk about unzipping and all sorts of things like that. These can remain zipped. We're going to say just once. Always just I'm once. Press enter and button. It will import this book into Easy Reader Plus. Now, this will take a while. Please wait. Because it needs to, Please it wait. Needs to extract all of this information. And so be patient. It's running the process. Um, this is 50. 14 to 15 hours of audio that it's extracting. So don't get impatient. Um, don't let it shut you down. Just give it time. And what it will do is it will bring us in and it's going to put this in the my books um, area. And we will then have access to our full audio tutorial and we can navigate that. Uh, this will work for Daisy Audio. You can also play EPUB as well as Daisy Text and TXT in uh, side menu Plus. loading. All right. Side menu. So button. it has loaded. It has imported and it has loaded. Now it is here. So again, what, what I can do, this is an audio book. So if I press my action button on the side of my Braille Note Touch Plus, this should start. Welcome button. to the HumanWare Braille Note Touch Plus audio tutorial created by Mystic Access. All Pause. Right. And I just paused it Welcome. by pressing that same button. Now again, this is audio. If I want to move around it, I can do that in different ways. You, the easiest way while it's playing, the easiest way to move through this would be, so I'm going to, I'm going to press play and I'm, it's going to, I'm going to try to talk over it and then I'll pause it and talk about what I'm doing. So you will hear it and me at the same time, which could get a little muddy and I, I totally get it, but I'm going to press play and I'll talk about moving through this. So what I can do is press space with four, six to jump forward. Welcome to sections. the humanware Braille Net web view and part one getting to know the braille no touch plus it will move me forward and while it's playing i can do that and hit play pause and i'll be in those various sections so again while i'm playing if i press t with space i will come into the level navigation menu navigation settings radio button checked book default so we can change that level what space with four six what will it move me by or space with one three. Space with four six moves me forward by what I have selected in this navigation menu. Space with one three moves me backward. So if I select radio button, say, heading not checked. Radio button, not checked. Heading one only. If I press enter here. 
I'll be moving by heading. Part one, one, getting to know the Braille No Touch Plus. So I'm going to play this. And you know what? My audio might have just gone crazy. Give me one second. Part there one, go. getting to know the Braille Note Touch Plus. Okay, so while it's playing. Welcome and summary of topics covered within this audio tutorial. If I press space with four six. Hello. Part two, we go to part exploring two. the Braille Note Touch's KeySoft application. Press space with four six. Part three, and so on. Using the Play Store and downloading third-party apps. Now I'm going to pause it. Some notes on part three. Pa exploring Kia. Some notes on part three. Okay, so again, you can pause this with the side button or space with G. But what's great here is you can easily move through. There are many, many, many sections of this tutorial. This is audio. You can move through. Um, the various levels and sections. This is very, very well done. I would encourage anybody out there who wants to learn anything and everything about the Braille Note Touch Plus to download this from our website. And if you go to Mystic Access, uh, if you go to their website, you can find all kinds of tutorials. Many are free, many are paid. They're very, very well done. We really love what they do. And this is a some, some definitely some some cross promoting going on here uh, for this, but it's a very neat way and you can access this fully on your Braille Note Touch Plus. Again, just by downloading it and then opening it from the file manager, we chose Easy Reader Plus and it, it takes a while, but it imports it and now I have the full audio tutorial. So I can listen to this and follow along. So, pause. I am gonna come out of here. Pause. Actually, I'm gonna play this one more time. Pause. Because I wanna, get out of here, come back. Main menu. All right. Now, I am going to give this over to the one and only Mr. Andrew Flatris, who's going to talk about file management. And then we're going to have a poll, and then we're going to take some questions. Thank you, everybody. Take it away, Andrew. Great stuff, Peter. Uh, I just want to quickly answer a question that came in that's relevant to the Easy Reader app and Bookshare. Um, so just before I start the file management system, um, there's a quick question as when my student tries to log into a Bookshare account from the Easy Reader Plus app, we receive an error message that says fail to log in. So this, uh, the reason behind this is because you haven't updated your key soft. What I would recommend is uh, from that main menu, go to A for all applications, press then the letter K to go to key up data and update your key soft. Now what will happen is you will get an update push to the Easy Reader app. So if you are getting error message that you're unable to log into accounts such as Bookshare, just make sure that you update through the the, e, um, the key of data. So the just updater, really yep. get that up. Okay. Okay, so file manager. Okay, let me just quickly. So I'm gonna here. answer a question I just heard pop through on the chat from Megan. Megan says, is there an audio tutorial for the Brilliant 14? And the answer is yes, there is. And it's, uh, it is on the website. It's also on our Victor Reader Stream uh, podcast channel uh, as well. So there, it's, it's, they, they did a great tutorial on that. All right. And while Andrew gets going, uh, what I'm also going to do, actually, I'm going to keep myself muted, but I'm going to keep my speech on so I can at least hopefully hear if any chats pop in. But uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, there he goes. Sharing that screen. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. Louder, louder, louder. Email, email. With the lovely British voice there that I have. Louder, louder. <laughs> Okay, file manager. Accessibility volume set to 50%. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go through uh, in the file manager is the structure and general navigation with the file manager. Now, this will play a big role when just generally dealing with your files and folders. We get a lot of questions asked about, well, how do I copy certain files or folders to my external drive, such as a USB or an SD card? And we'll go through that. Uh, we'll go through how to copy and cut paste files to those devices We'll search for files. So again, this is something that we get frequently asked. Like, I've managed to save a file, but I cannot remember where I placed it, you know, which folder. So save, instead of having to go through every single folder to try and find this file, there is a simple way to find a file, providing that you know certain keywords that were in that file name. We'll go through deleting files and folders and renaming files and folders. So from that main menu, I'm going to go to the file manager. So I press on the letter F to jump to file, file manager, manager. Key files. And then I'm going to press enter. Drive selection. Key files. 
storage. Now, when I'm in file manager, and I, I cannot stress this enough, the first thing that I would recommend to press at this stage is space and D. Space and D will take you to your drive selection. It's just a good way to start at the very beginning and then you can work out where you've got to go. So for example, if I was located in go to alarms pull Android folder, sign documents folder, test hello .txt. documents. Okay. So if, if I've opened up the file manager and I'm placed in my documents folder, the most easiest way to start at the very beginning is just press that space for the letter D. Drive selection. And you'll go storage. straight to that drive selection where you can then choose whether it be your storage, which is your internal drive, or a USB drive or an SD card if that is available. So I'm going to select the, the storage. Go to alarms folder. Now what you'll notice in your, your touch or touch plus is that you will have some of these default folders. So you will have the folder called alarms, you'll have a folder called Android, Android folder, sign folder, DCIM, documents folder, documents, download, folder. download. These are standard folders that you will have already uh, available on your Gibson folder. Okay. Some folder. of them are new ones. So this is a new one that I've created English. Maths folder. Maths again. Movies folder. Music uh, folder. I think I have a Notifications science one folder. there as well. Sync folder folder. At this point, because we're in a list, we can utilize that first letter navigation. So that if I have folders that begin with a letter S, I can press the letter S. Schoolwork folder. And it will take me straight to the beginning of uh, folders that begin with a letter S. Okay. So I'm going to go into one of my folders, which is English. So I'm going to press the letter E. English folder. And I'm now going to press enter, or I can press any one of my cursor keys to go into this folder. Can't you sleep, little bear, dot, dot. So what will happen when you go into the folder, it will place you on the first document, the first file that is in that list. Now, if you do not have any files in that list, you will be placed on an item called... Go to parent folder. Go to parent folder. Now this, term, this does tend to confuse some people. So the go to parent folder, what that is, it means to exit out of this current English folder and go back to my previous list. It's in theory like pressing space with E to go back. So that, that just wanna to summarize that, that go to parent basically means to exit out of the English folder. So if I press enter here, go to alarms folder. It takes me out of the English folder and I'm now back up to my first level list of folders to, to view. So I'm gonna go Android back to my folder. English, P for English. English folder and press enter. Can't you sleep little bear dot dot. And it straight away takes me to a file because I have got files that are in the in this English folder. So that's really just a, a general guidance of how you navigate around a file, you know, the file manager. Now I'm going to quickly go through how you copy a file. So I have a document here called exam in my English folder and I want to copy that and paste that into my um, USB stick so that I can hand that in to potentially my teacher or maybe my parents want to to view it on on a computer of some kind. So I navigate to the file exam .docs. and at this point the command for copy like you can copy text in the on the, the keyword is backspace with Y. Now if you don't know these shortcuts they will be available on that contextual menu by pressing space with M. Okay so to copy this single file I'm going to press backspace with Y. Copy. I then get prompted copied. So it's now available on my clipboard. Now the next stage I want to do is go back to my drive. So space with D for drive. Drive selection, storage. So I now choose my USB, which is already inserted. It's called the vendor USB, USB drive. drive. I'm going to press enter on that. Lost dot director folder. At this point, I don't have any folders. And sometimes what you'll get when you plug in USB sticks is you get this, uh, this directory file. It, it is annoying, no matter how many times you delete it, it just appears each time. So you'd have to ignore those, these, these files. They're created generically on, on USB sticks, whether you plug them into Android devices or whether you plug them into some computers, they can get created. So at this point, I, ha I haven't got a specific folder at this stage, so I'm just gonna paste it. So paste command is backspace with the letter D. Lost exam dot docs mark. And that's now made a copy of my exam document. It's not removed. I've not deleted the exam document from the original folder. It's just made a copy of it. And I've now pasted that into my file, into my USB stick. So from here, I can now remove my USB stick, making sure that you press that space, um, sorry, enter with E to eject your USB stick. And that's safety, safety remove the, the USB. Uh, and then you'll be able to open that up on any other computer uh, or device that would uh, would open up docx files okay 
So I'm going to go back to my drive list. Drive selection, storage. And I'm going to choose my storage again. Go to alarms folder. And I'm now going to quickly show you how to create new folders. So again, maybe there's a new folder you want to create. Uh, maybe it's French that you're learning. Um, so at this stage, I'm on my first level folder. So I've pressed enter on storage and I want to create a new folder at this position. So to create a new folder, I can press space with the letter N for new. Edit box folder. And I then get prompted to input the new folder name. And at this point, again, you can type in um, literary braille or, or uncontracted at this stage entirely up to you. And I'm going to type in Delete French. F R E N dots one six. French. Press enter. Key files. Maths folder. And that's now created my folder French. So if I navigate French to folder. French and press enter. Go to parent folder. The first item it's selected is go to parent folder. As I mentioned before, because I haven't got any documents in there, it's put me into that go to parent folder. But what if I want to create a subfolder? Perhaps I've got maybe lesson one or lesson two, various different lessons that I need to organize all of my files uh, in my French folder. Again, you need to make sure that you are in the correct position before creating that new folder. So I'll start at the very beginning. Drive selection. Okay, Story. so I'm going to create a new folder called lesson one, as it, which is a subfolder under the French folder. Okay, so I'm going to go to storage. Go to alarms folder. I'm going to navigate to French, or I can press the letter F to jump French straight folder. there. I'm going to press enter to go into go to the parent folder. folder. Now, at this stage, now I can press my space with the letter N. Edit box folder. And again, you're prompted with the folder name. So at this stage, again, I'm going to put L-E-S-O-N. Lesson number one. One key files. Go to parent folder. So now I have a subfolder. Lesson one folder. Lesson one. So when you come to save all your documents again, you can then just navigate to the lesson one folder instead of choosing the French. But make sure, um, you know, just to avoid any confusion, this go, go to, to parent, parent folder. folder that does get a lot of people confused. It just means to exit out of this folder. So if I press space and E, go to alarms folder, takes me out of that folder. If I want to delete files or folders, so I'm now going to delete that file, or sorry, that delete that folder. I'm going to go back to the French folder. French folder. I'm going to press enter. Lesson one folder. And I want to delete the lesson one. And again, all of these commands that I mentioned are in that contextual menu. Let's try it. So I'm going to press space with M. So let's pretend that I've forgotten how to press the command to delete a file or folder. So I press space with the letter M. Context menu. And I have various Mark different options. Backspace with L. As I, as I space through or use my thumb keys to Mark go through this. Open. Info, space, rename, backs, delete, backspace with dots, two, three, five, There six. we have it. Delete, backspace with dots, two, three, five, six, backspace with lower G. Now, at this point, I can press enter to select that. Are you sure you want to delete the folder and all its content? And okay. you will be prompted. So when you're deleting files and folders, you will get this prompt. So at this point, you need to navigate to that OK button. So again, you can use the first letter navigation by pressing okay. O. Button. And then press enter to, to remove Key it. Files. That's now deleted. deleted. And again, the same, the same will apply to files. So if there are some files, let's do a file. So let's exit out of the French folder. Go to alarms folder. I'm going to go back into my English folder. English folder. Where I know I have some documents. Can't you sleep little bear dot dot. And I'm going to delete the exam folder. Exam dot Exam dot. file, sorry. So let's delete the exam. So this time I know the command already. Yeah. It's backspace lower G. Are you sure you want to delete this file? There's the okay. prompt that you get. I'm going to press the letter O. OK, button. And then press enter. Key files. Deleted. Functions okay. and intercept assessment with word symbols dot BRF. So we've covered at the moment how to basically navigate around the file manager. We know how now how to copy files from a storage to a USB. Uh, if you do want to copy files from a USB as well, we can do that as well. Just to, just to recap on that. So again, let's press space. Drive selection. Storage. In Docker USB drive. Our USB drive. Dos dot director folder. Exam dot doc. There's that exam folder, like, oh, sorry, exam file that I previously copied. So again, this time I'm going to press the copy command backspace with Y. If you do want to cut it, you can do. So what the, the difference is between copy and cut is cut will actually remove the file from this directory. So it's basically sort of a, a move command. So you're moving from 
this directory to another directory. But I'm just going to copy the backspace with Y. Copy. I'm going to press space and D. Drive selection. Drive Story. selections. Back to my storage. I'm going to press enter. Go to alarms folder. And I'm going to paste this into my documents folder this Design time. Folder. Let's navigate to documents, documents. folder. Let's enter. Hello.txt. And I'm going to paste by pressing backspace with letter V. Exam.docs. Marked. And that's now paste that file in there. Now you can copy more than one file at a time and you can copy a more than one folder at a time. So a batch, you know, a selection of, of files that you can do. And the way that we do this is by using the mark command. Okay. So I'm currently sitting in my documents. Um, let's start like the very beginning selection. again so we all know Story. where we are. I'm going to copy two files from my English folder this time. So my teacher would like me to copy, or my, maybe my parents would like me to copy two files that they want to review on the documents that I've worked on. So I'm gonna press enter on storage. Go to, alarms folder. Go to my English folder by pressing that to English in. folder. I'm gonna press enter. Can't you sleep little bear dot dot. And perhaps I want to go to the live webinar documents here that I have. Functions and intercessor live webinar. Okay, dot. now instead of pressing backspace and Y at this point, because I'm copying more than one, I'm going to mark it by pressing backspace with one, two, and three. Live webinar, docs, marked. Okay, you'll then get prompted that that live webinar, that file name is being marked. I'm going to navigate to the next and cube groups document. Maybe it's my Nemeth fractions and cube groups, which we covered on Tuesday. So I'm going to mark that one, so backspace with the letter L. Nemeth fractions and cube groups dot BRF, mark. And I can continue to carry on going. Um, you know, I could go to Bottom. maybe let's go to parent one. folder. Let's choose Top. can't you sleep with little bear? And cube roots dot BRF. Live webinar functions. Can't you sleep little bear dot doc? Backspace with the letter L there. Can't you sleep little bear dot doc? Now, if you've accidentally marked it and you don't want to copy that, you can simply press backspace and the letter L again to unmark that. So I'm going to unmark can't you sleep little bear? Can't you sleep little bear dot doc? And that's the that's now unselected that. So now I've got two files marked. Now I know the, the copy command, which is backspace with Y. Copied. Uh, I've copied those two files. I'm now going to go back to my drive. Drive selection. Space Storage. with the letter D. Indoor USB Choose drive. Choose my USB drive. Lost dot director folder. Press enter on the USB drive. And now I'm going to paste, which is backspace. Lost live webinar. And the letter V. Docs. And there we marked. have it. I have two files that I've marked. Fractions and cube roots dot VRF. Marked. My USB drive. Okay. So that's how we copy batches of files and again you can do the same with folders so if you have got loads of files in one folder then obviously you just copy that single uh, that single folder and paste that into the into your external drive we're now going to go for how to rename files okay now this is the tricky bit of renaming files and i really want to stress and point out some importance here um, so let's go back to my drive selection storage, storage. and i'm going to go to my english Go to alarms folder. Go to parent folder. Go to alarms folder. Go to parent folder. Bottom. Go to parent folder. Go to alarms folder. Android folder. Sign folder. Documents folder. Download folder. Drisnak fills folder. English folder. Can't you sleep, little bear? Dot doc. And I'm going to go to the live webinar. Document. Functions and into live webinar. Docs. Okay. So to rename files. The command to rename files is backspace with the letter R. Backspace with R. Edit box, live webinar, docs, alert, key files, input the new name, live webinar, docs, cancel, OK. Computer Braille is required. OK, so we got some prompts there that we mentioned is, is computer Braille is required. Now, at this stage, it's really important that you do not remove the extension. OK, so at the moment, what I have displayed on my brow display is livewebinar.docx. So what I can do at this stage is just place my cursor on the full stop. So if it's in um, if you're using US computer brow, it'll be showing as uh, dots four and six. If you're using uh, UK computer brow, then it will show dots two, five and six. So I'm going to place my cursor on the full stop. At that point, then I can press my backspace. Space deleted. I delete it. 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 W the space delete. I delete it. I delete it. I delete it. And I'm going to call this just T E F T. Computer browser. So delete it. For a capital sign when you're doing computer browser, it's involving the backspace. So backspace and T. Capital T. E. There we go. S. T. 
And at this point, I'm going to press and enter. Key files. And that's then renamed that file. So what's really important is that you do not rename that extension because if you do, and I'll show you, I'll show this to you now. Backspace and R. Edit box. If I just decide to do computer braille is required. Test. E S T. I will be prompted with something. Alert! Changing a file's extension can make it unusable. Are you sure you want to change the extension of this file? So yes. if you get this prompt, make sure that you say no. Okay, no, it's really I'm... important. Make sure that you do say no. Okay, just make sure yes, that you docs. continue having that extension. If you've removed it all, then by all means you can type in test full stop vocx. Um, but just it's just to get good practice, and when you are renaming those files, that you do not delete that the last bit of the extension. Keep that in. Okay, and the same applies if it's a BRF file or a TXT file as well. Okay, um, well that concludes the file management. So just to recap on what we've done, we've, we know how to basic navigation. Um, one thing I didn't cover though was searching, wasn't it? That's right, I didn't cover searching either. <laughs> oh man, you'll, you, I, knew you would, I knew you would remember. Yes, okay, so searching, <laughs> right. So I have got, let's say, um, go back to this my storage, storage here okay so i'm going to press enter on my storage go to alarms folder so at this stage i know that i have a, a document called can't country sleep little bear okay uh or maybe i maybe i know I, I think i've called it can't sleep little bear or something i know it's definitely got the word sleep in it so i perhaps want to find out where i've placed that document so what we can do is the general find command space with the letter f Search for space files or F will give you my for prompts. items. And I'm just going to simply type Search. here. End of field. I'm going to type in sleep. S L E E P. And then press enter. Sleep. Key files. Results list. Four items. Slash storage slash emulated slash zero slash in. It's now given me various different places of where that document is stored. So at this stage, it's found four items and it's given me the um, the location of where it is, it's under my English folder, can't sleep, can't you sleep little bear. Um, I've also got it. Slash storage, slash emulated, slash zero, slash download, slash. In my downloads folder. Slash storage, slash emulated. And I've also got it in my schoolwork folder. So I, I like this book very much. <laughs> so um, at this stage, you can actually press enter. If you want to open this document up, you can. You could just press enter. Sign folder. Open with keyword. Use a different app. And what you'll get is you, like when you open up files within File Manager, you will, you'll get prompted of what action you want to use, which application. So if you've used keyword before, it'll be, the, it'll be set as default. You can always, just choose uh, just, once, just once. once. If you do want to set your docx files to always open up with keyword, then you can select always. But I always like to choose just once. And that's going to open up my loading. Alert. A keyword recovery file exists. Um, keyword did not close discard button. Edit box. Edit box. Okay. Can't. So I'm now in my document. Alert. Do you want to save your document? Okay, so just to summarize then, we've Keep covered fine. how to navigate. Sign Space and D is that command that takes you back to that, that list of all your drives. We know how to copy files and folders, backspace with Y to copy. We know how to mark individual files and folders, backspace with the letter L. And we know how to paste, backspace with the letter V. We know how to delete, backspace lower G. And to search for files, backspace with F and finally to rename is backspace with the letter R and all those. Oh, you only, you only missed, you only missed one, Andrew. Did I? What did I miss? Oh, you said backspace with F, but you meant space with F. Space That's with all right. We'll F. forgive oh, you. Corrected. I was You're on a, a roll. Dude. I was in a backspace mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all those, all those commands are in that contextual menu. Context menu. Uh, Mark and slash the, I use this a lot as well. L. So, you know, it's a, it's a great, I can't stress enough the contextual menu, Peter. I mean, yep. Do you ever use it often? I mean, I sometimes forget certain commands. You know? I use it all the time. And, and especially in KeyWeb or if you're not remembering, there are so many more pieces, even, even in here, you know, that we haven't covered. I mean, the share options in there, file information, um, all of that stuff is there. So if you're looking for the cut command, if you're looking for any of those commands live in the context menu, and that's absolutely how you can find them. So use your space with M and jump in there. And what's nice about that, what we, what we, strive for there is your users, you know, your, your braille readers and writers who are working with their braille note touches, they will innately memorize those commands uh, over time. But as a, as a teacher, as a parent, as a, you know, an instructor, 
you don't have to memorize all those commands. You can just think, oh gosh, we want to copy this or we want to rename this or, well, we know we don't have to go kind of scrounging around for it on the web or somewhere when we can just pull up the context menu, much like, you know, pressing the applications keys, you know, on Windows or something like that. So it can come in very, very handy. Perfect. Good stuff. Job. Shall we and jump to some questions? But before let's that, do shall, we, shall we launch the poll? Let's, yeah, we're going to have a poll. Um, we're going to have a poll first. So let's, let's, um, and I tried to answer a question live. I was trying to do some stuff while Andrew was talking and I definitely cannot get back into the Q and a panel. So I need to look into why that is, but, uh, we're going to launch a poll in terms of what you would like to see on upcoming. And again, just vote, you know, for what you would like to see the most. Um, and what we can do is we're going to use that to help us develop content. Also, I will say what's not in here, what I'd like to do is a little bit of some fun stuff. How do we watch something on Netflix? Or how do we listen to our, our radio stations to stay informed right now? Or how do we um, you know, do some online shopping or, or use, I know I just ordered a bunch of stuff uh, using Instacart the other day. So how do we do that? And we might look into some of that as well. So keep that in mind. In addition, we're looking at doing some braille display stuff next Thursday. So, so focusing on the brilliance uh, with iOS um, and talking about pairing and navigation and some of that stuff. So we will be looking at the braille display side, but this poll will relate directly to the braille note touch plus and the braille note sort of uh, pieces. So let's okay. fire it up. It's now gone. All right, okay, poll is that, open. So we'll leave open. that we'll leave that open. Um, we can leave that open for for now, and then let's jump in and look in for for kind of some questions. Some questions. So okay. Kyle has been asking quite a bit <laughs> about exam mode. So Kyle, if you're looking to lock the unit down, you're going to want to use a third party app locking. Um, sort of program, right? You can use, I, I'm happy to, to, to demonstrate this at some point, but you would essentially want to lock access possibly to the settings panel or to Chrome or to the web, or you're going to need as the instructor or as the person who's proctoring that exam or, or giving that exam, you're going to want to use a third party app locking program where you would create a code and you would lock or block access to the applications that you do not want to be used. So you might want to only unblock the Braille terminal, for instance, so that the, this device becomes totally just a, a, just a Braille display um, with, with a screen reader. You might want to unblock everything, you know, except the word processor and so on. So that's how you will do that. There is no one touch sort of mode that you can put it in, but by all means, you can make the device totally locked down. Uh, that could also be done from a mobile device management standpoint if you're a network administrator, um, depending on what types of MDM software you're using. So, can be done. Uh, I believe there is a video floating around that I created. I might have to look for it uh, with how to install an app locker and generate a, a pin. And again, there is no right or wrong answer there because there are probably thousands of app lockers um, that you that you might want to explore which one is going to work best for you um, as the as the instructor so that's kind of where that that app locking um, or you know exam mode sort of comes into play all right andrew yeah. what else we got right so i'm going to quickly answer some of these questions that are coming into the q and a uh, does space plus D work on the brown note touch as well? The answer is yes. Everything that we covered with the file management system uh, is identical. So space with D will work. The backspace with the letter R will work. Everything is exactly the same. Yes. Okay. Uh, here's, a, here's a good question. Can you copy files from one USB to another? So that means pulling out your USB stick and then pasting. Now, my immediate answer is going to say no. Um, what I would probably recommend you doing is copying the file first to your storage, removing that USB stick, and then plugging in the other USB stick, and again, copying it from the storage and then pasting it to the, to the other drive. That's what I would recommend. What do you think, Peter? Yeah, I think to be safe, I would do that. I mean, you could try it because it may be in some sort of a, a buffer, if you will, but I, don't, I wouldn't encourage doing that because you do need to eject the storage and kind of move things. If you need to move something from one thumb drive to another, uh, I would definitely put it, 
put it on your unit and then and then copy it back off to your second thumb drive um, and then by all means you can delete it from your unit at that point but I would I would I would do it that way yeah okay to select multiple fi files for copying is the command for that backspace with dots one two three yes it is you've answered your question backspace yep. with one two three backspace and L and the reason for that command is it, it comes down to the word long press. So if you think about Android a lot of times, or, or iOS, when you double press and hold on something, you're selecting it. That's why that command is what it is. So backspace with L is your long press, and that will allow you to select three files and then delete them, or share them, or copy them, or cut them, and so on. Okay, what is the cut command? Well, think again oh. of a computer, uh, the letter X backspace with the letter X. And remember, all these commands are in that contextual menu. Space with the letter M to open up that contextual menu. Okay. All right. So, um, what are you using to screen mirror? Okay, well, uh, quickly answer on that one. We're screen mirroring to a computer using an application called Connect. Uh, it's on Windows 10 only, but you can screen mirror on other applications such as TeamViewer and Zoom. If you look at our previous webinars that we've recorded, uh, we showcase on how to connect to, to TeamViewer. Yep, TeamViewer, Zoom, ScreenLeap, there are many ways. Uh, we're using Connect because we're doing this. We need to get uh, audio and various things, and we, we have this. We have a, we have a, whole, uh, a whole setup going on here, throwing throwing content back and forth and such but you can absolutely uh, Windows 10 computer is very simple because it is just the connect app on Windows and then you go in to settings and you go to connected devices and you can cast your screen okay and so I don't know if my audio is very clear but uh, the paste command is backspace with the letter V for Victor that could just be my accent so letter V for Victor backspace with the letter V. I think we should do one where I talk like you and you talk like me. <laughs> that would be a good webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it, you know, it'd be like this the whole time, you know? <laughs> um, okay, should we open up? Let's unmute, the, yeah, let's see who, who we've got. So we'll, we'll take a few questions on the, uh, on the live, on the, on the, on the live uh, audio here. Okay, so here. we have Linda. Hello, Linda, you're unmuted, where are you from? Hello, Linda. All right, we're gonna have like a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna institute the buzzer. <laughs> Linda, are you there? Okay. okay. There Can we rock and me? roll. You have showed up at the last in the nick of time. How are you, <laughs> Linda? Fine. I'm really new at this Braille Plus. I just well, I got it a year ago, and so I'm. Uh, first of all, I want to know. I have two questions. Is that okay? Sure. Fire away. I'm, I want to know if you do, if we can do ebooks, because um, I thought when I want to some books you can only get it in an ebook or on a, a print copy. So I just so it's if it's kind of a loaded question. So ebook all e means is electronic. So ebook could mean anything. Do you specifically have a particular book type or a place or when you say ebook, what do you mean? Well, it's a book from, I'm a member of, it's for, from my church in the, in their website, the, you can, they have, it's for Deseret book. Okay. So, so what I, what I would do is you, the, in easy, if they can put that book in EPUB format, which they probably can, EPUB, then it will play, or you can load it into Easy Reader. If they can put it in DAISY, which is, you know, another ebook format, that will also play in or work with Easy Reader. There are many other applications, but but so yes, we fully support eBooks. But it's a very it's it's a very very broad term, kind of like saying, do you does your device play music? And you'll say yes, but what type of music file, right? So you mm -hmm. need to know what type of, of file that is, and and there certainly are ways to work with many different types of, of eBook formats. But I would recommend that you ask for them to put it in EPUB, and you should be good. Okay, I'll do that. And what's your next question? Okay, now, um, when you did your the book, uh, Little Women, did you just, do you do that when you're inside the ebook, or do you, how do you, because um, I was late getting in here with trying to get this thing to work. <laughs> okay. So I would. 
Well, I searched for it in Bookshare. So I went into Bookshare and searched for Little Women. If you, and then I was able to find it and download. So what I'd recommend is when we archive this, so it'll be on our website, it will also be um, available on the Victor Reader stream or on our, on our podcast channel. You can listen to exactly what I did because I downloaded it using my Bookshare account. So if you have a Bookshare account, you would be able to do exactly what I did. If you do not, then you're gonna have to track it down some other way. I think I do. I, I think I, I, yeah, I paid to, for that. I hope I rock and roll. You got to get those credentials and, <laughs> and you'll be, you'll be rocking. Yeah. And cool. Kate, okay, you know, when you get, they, you send your thing back to get fixed. If you have books in there, do you lose all your books? Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> Anytime you're sending anything in, it's always good to, you never know. It's always good to back things up, uh, whether it's a computer you're sending over to Geek Squad or something you're sending to us or anything at all. You always want to make sure you have a physical sort of backup or a cloud backup of what you're doing. So it won't guarantee that it would be gone, but I would, I would strongly recommend always backing up any files, any folders, anything that's important to you prior to, um, prior to, to sending anything in for repair. Thanks so much, Linda. Okay, thank you. All right. What do we got, Andy? Okay, next one. Christian Butling. Christian is back. What's up, buddy? Christian, how are you, Christian? Hello, Christian. All right. Can you hear me? Sure can. How's it going? It's going good down here in Seguin. How's everything going in Chicago? It's fantastic. I'm living the dream. So, so I've actually got a few questions for you. Number one, I'm going to kind of backfire your own teachings on you a little bit because the Easy Reader Plus commands that you use for all the book navigation, they're not in the context menu. Hey, oh, you know, I just talked to Andrew about this this morning. What do you have to <laughs> yeah. say, Mr. Product Manager? Yeah, that is correct. So yeah, well, well sort of uh, said, Christian. And uh, it is something that is missing on the Easy Reader Plus. This is a third party application we've been working with, with Dolphin. So um, it was something where we'd either not have it at all and, and go without a contextual menu for the first release um, or later add a contextual menu. So it is something yep. that we are looking to add. Uh, it will be there, it will be there. Unfortunately, because it's not key reader, because we didn't build this, we, we don't have it in there, but it will, it will come, Christian. If you need the document, it is on our website and anyone who wants it can email humanwarelive at humanware.com. We're happy to get you the, all these commands in the easy reader guide, as well as there are snapshot tutorials up there as well. All right, one more question, Mr. Bertling. Also, also is the, uh, is your, is your work email, so the peter.chusik at humanware.com, is that still active? And also, Andrew, what voice are you using? I want that voice. <laughs> so, so to answer your question, yes, my email address is working. I would strongly recommend, though, if it relates to Humanware Live, please email humanwarelive at humanware.com. You can email me, sure. Um, that's that's totally fine. But uh, yeah, the, both both emails work. There's nothing wrong with wherever you want to send it. I will uh, I will definitely respond uh, wherever it goes. And the benefit of Humanware Live, if anyone sends stuff there, is that it can be looked at not just by me. We can have multiple people looking at that to to respond to those or forward those emails onto the correct place. So that's the answer there. But Andrew, what yeah. is your the wonderfully voice. British <laughs> voice. The voice is Graham. So if you go to Graham. your voice under your profiles, you can select the English language and then choose Graham. All right. Christian. Thanks, Christian. We're going to move on, my friend. Okay. We then have Judy. Hello, Judy. Judy, are you there? Hello. There Hello, you Judy. go. You are here. Alrighty, so um, I have a question. <clears throat> I was practicing your enter with V for your visual preview. Uh -huh. And when I do it on my note taker, I'm getting <laughs> this, like all this stuff about like Dropbox and I don't know. So how you have it. definitely set, an, you have set something to open by default. So what we can cover next, and we'll do this. So Andrew, okay. can you take a note? Yes. We're gonna yeah. cover how to clear defaults. So if you're pressing enter with V or you're doing something and it's always, it means you've selected always, 
yeah. instead of just once. Well, I didn't that, do it that that this time, but it might have been a, might have been a at different At some thing. point in time. So yeah, some right. point in time, if you say always, you have set a default and that needs to be sure. cleared so that you have a choice. So that's why in general, when you get those prompts, you want to mm -hmm. say just once. And if you don't, it can always be cleared, but it just alleviates you kind of now having to run through these various sure. steps. Now, okay, in the, in the, if you, so we'll if cover that. You cover that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Judy. We will. And then I have one more question. Yes. And it relates to, <clears throat> I have been able to um, access the HW Buddy app and I first downloaded it on my iPad and then I have now downloaded it on my note taker. And I didn't have any trouble yesterday though. I was with a student on the phone um, and we were, this was the first time I was downloading it on the uh, Google touch or yeah, right. Touch, <laughs> no touch plus. And she was also, I was, she was doing it at the same time mm -hmm. and we both could not enter into the email uh, text field fields. Yeah. Like yes. So, so this came up on Facebook and Andrew, we fixed it. It's been fixed today. Yes. There was an issue with getting in and some Android apps I've seen this with lately. One way you could have gotten in uh, would have been to double tap and hold on that with the touch screen and it would have put okay. you in there. However, that's been fixed. Um, I tried that, put turning the touch barrel off. Yeah, and you have to double tap and hold for a couple seconds, and when you release, you would go right in. Yep. I see. Yep. Okay, well, we, so I was able to get in today, but in my phone um, consult with her this morning at 1030, she said she was still not able to get in, and so I was confused by that because I was and she wasn't. So I had her clear all her apps and try again. Is there, should she have restarted her device, or what would you have suggested? I'll just make sure that she goes to the Play Store and uh, searches for the app again and just make sure that there's an, because you know, there was an update that was pushed. So just right. make sure that, that, that there isn't any outstanding update. That app that. might not have updated, Judy. So if you go in the app okay. and you show the navigation drawer and then go okay. to My Apps and Games and okay. then Update, you will see if okay. there's any pending updates. And I would, I would have her check. Also, even on the iPhone side, there have been some little buggies where you can't log out and log back in. We're, we, we're aware of all of it. So we, we're on it. They will be fixed. It's building an app has been, a, it's been an undertaking to say the least, right, Andrew? It has. <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah, I guess it is, but it is awesome. And I really appreciate it. Some students of mine are so eager to learn about everything note taker and others are like, you know, they take it home and they don't sure, even and it just on, learn you know? it. Yeah, no. And that's what our goal is. And so bear with okay. us on some of those little glitches. Uh, we mm -hmm. know, that they're there. I mean, even yeah. even with all of the testing we do, sometimes things pop up just out of nowhere. And that's true for anything. I mean, I'm an avid, I use apps all day, every day, and I've been an Uber and I'm trying to change my payment method and the whole thing's inaccessible or doesn't work. And, yeah. and they fix it and it's about reporting and letting us know. And sometimes those things just happen. So we, we, we will have that fixed, but I'd strongly have you uh, have her go into the Play Store, show the navigation drawer, my apps and games and updates and make sure that that app is fully updated. And then she should be good to go. As a teacher, I just want to say thank you for doing these live webinars. They have been helpful to me as a consumer because I'm also visually impaired and I use the device, but also have five students who use them. That across is so awesome. Every, every grade, every grade from, uh, you know, uh, sixth grade through 12th grade. So really appreciate this uh, support that you're offering. So thank you. We love to hear it. We're going to keep doing it. And please uh, feel free to always raise your hand if you have questions and we'll do what we can to answer them and keep trying to bring content. So thanks a ton, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to do one more. Okay. So Uno we mas. Have, uh, we have Heather, Heather Gary. Heather Gary. Hello. Heather in New Jersey. Can you hear me? We can. How are you? Hey, Peter. How are you? I'm living the dream. <laughs> Thank you for your help the past few days. Oh, um, no problem. I have, um, and if you do do email, if you could do working directly in Gmail, that would be wonderful. Um, yes, we can certainly look at that uh, for sure. There will be a little bit of some issues with attaching, saving files and some of that, but, but we'll, we, will, so we certainly can look at that. Perfect. I have a couple of questions just from today. Sure. I don't know. Sure. So in, I have a student, you know, who um, is excellent about, uh, she's in first grade, she downloads a lot of books to uh, Easy Reader. And she likes to listen to it and then she'll read the Braille display. I was hoping to, to transition her to reading it independently in the Braille display. And, but is there any way that she can select a word and have it tell her the word if it's a challenging word for her? 
or so years? that's a it's a great question so and i saw the question too pop up about simultaneously reading braille and having speech and that does to simultaneously read braille and have speech would be would not be possible however what you can do is if you're in a book and you want to get to to an actual word andrew correct me if i'm wrong but i think would you could you use i need to check this into this because i i think you can use let me see here i'm gonna i'm gonna look into this heather and i'll, I'll send you a note because i think there should be a way for you to do it and i think that way would be to use your um your dot five with space should move you forward word by word however there's no cursor there so you're not yeah. you're not necessarily dropping a cursor in you know yes i understand um okay so maybe it's not possible yet yeah it might not be what do you think andrew yeah i'd, I'd probably definitely email us on that i'd like to uh to have a look in, more into that for sure so yeah send us an so email to read that, through yeah read through those books word by word we can totally look look into that uh speech wise okay so you want me to email that question to you Just yeah yeah send it float it over float it to float it to me and we can we can give it a look okay and the second question is about um transferring files with team viewer and the file management folder management. Okay. Have you noticed that there's, I tried that with the student, um, and when I put it directly into sort of a main folder, like English, it worked fine, but when I tried to put it into a sub subfolder, it never appeared. Um, have you noticed any issue with that? Do you know, Andy? That's a just, great one. I'm yeah. so glad you're using that, because that yeah. is awesome. It's been so amazing. You're referring it goes to back to the first webinar. <laughs> yeah, so you've connected to my team viewer, and yes. you're sending a file and you're going to the directory that's on the on the, the touch device and choosing the subfolder and then choosing the send and it's not going. Yes. Um, okay. Could could you get the student to to do the find command? You know, within File Manager that we covered today, just in case it's it's sitting somewhere else. Uh, I'd be interested to find if it is. So if you could get the student to press space and F in File Manager and then get them to type in the name of the file that you transferred. Maybe it's- Let's See if it's, it's there, yeah. yeah. See where it went, I'll try that. Okay. Yeah. Try that and otherwise it, it could just be a limitation of, of Android not allowing you to get that deep. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Heather, thanks, it's on. Take care. All right. Okay. So, I think we're gonna we're gonna call it a day, but please, please, please send your feedback to humanware live at humanware.com. Uh, you can also look forward to next week. I know we're going to be. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're doing Tuesday. I think I'm gonna come up with something a little uh, a little bit of more fun for the for the second part. I'm thinking about either something like uh, Netflix or or radio stations or something along those lines. Next Thursday, we'll be looking at the Braille displays. So we're probably going to look at using a Braille display with iOS, um, kind of the process of pairing, as well as the, the basic navigation side. Um, and then we're going to most likely do the same sort of thing with the screen reader. Just again, your basic commands of working with a screen reader and a Braille display on the Windows side. Any, any, any thoughts on that stuff, Andrew? Um, well, it's, it's a, I think it's something that we need to look into. We certainly need to have a bit more extra fun involved in there. You know, it's not yeah. always about education, is it? We want to make sure that everyone is uh, engaged with the Braille device. So uh, I'm all up for uh, the Netflix side of things. Uh, I just want to point out that we have many questions that are floating by. Uh, and I do apologize that we can't get to every single question. But please, as, uh, as Peter said, just give us an email at humanwarelive at humanware.com and we can answer your question there. We haven't answered it uh, to, in today's webinar. Uh, and that applies to the Facebook, uh, those that are viewing it on Facebook. Uh, I do apologize, I haven't got down to actually even looking at the, the questions, but I'll, I'll probably certainly look at posting some of your answers uh, in Facebook in due course. So, I'm gonna say goodbye hey, for me. That's right, thanks friends. Hopefully we'll have a better outro at some point, other than just bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, everybody. everybody.